Hi, missus. Good morning. Hello. Who is on the show today? My favorite, Paul Kemmel. Who? Paul Kramer, Paul Kemmel. <laughs> <laughs> From the auto Kramers, that's exactly right. See you in there. Good and warmed up now. Awesome. How about you, everybody? So wonderful. <laughs> so wonderful. Oh my goodness! Welcome back. Welcome back again, Mrs. Ryan. Take hello, two. Hello. Take two. Mr. Oh, and Paul left. Well, Paul Kramer was there a second ago. That's pretty funny. Um, there he is. He's back. Hi, Paul Kramer. <laughs> we added a camera over there. You probably don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Oh, that's a run. All right. And we're already pushed in because we've done all this already. All right. Welcome back. Hi, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. Welcome back to everybody else. Today is Thursday, February 13th, 2020. Oh, my gosh. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy hard day. <laughs> Paul Kramer's laughing at that one, especially. I love it. Um, with that, uh, if you couldn't tell already, our guest today is Mr. Paul Kramer from the Auto Kennel, and uh, we're going to be talking about the Ed, and we're going to be talking about the Auto Kennel and the new merchandise and the open house coming up and all the other stuff. Uh, rallies, and, I don't know, we've got a bunch of stuff on your card, plus he's a good friend. And we figured out it's been a long time since you've been here. You're kind of doing it regular for a little bit, and then it's been like over a year. All right. This will be good. Uh, Mrs. Ryan, how are you doing today? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh it up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is nice. Now we get a little secret, uh, little private joke here that nobody else knows about. Lovely. I think you're awesome, Mrs. Ryan. I think you do a great job with this, everything you've got going on. How is your MS today? Should we talk about that? We've got to check in at least a little bit for everybody it's else. Not great. Not going great? No. But you are great right now. Is I, it a, what, take us some sunshine in. Does that help? Sometimes that helps. Sure, yeah. I think sun, sunshine's good for me. All right. I'd like to uh, start this show with a little bit of gratitude today. Uh, you might have noticed that we were dark last week. We were scheduled to be dark anyway, or somehow that worked out. But, but, but what it did uh, allow was uh, a little bit of downtime for this guy to go to the dentist. And uh, what happened was about three years ago, we moved here from the beach. And I used to have a dentist that I loved, a whole, whole office down there in Manhattan Beach. Uh, shout out to Beach Teeth. Uh, really, really enjoyed my experience there. And then we moved here to the Valley and we started going some other place that I'm not going to name and didn't have bad experiences, but didn't have the same experiences and I wasn't enjoying it. And then uh, a fellow breakfast clubber by the name of Ray the Dentist, his real name is <laughs> Raymond Rishi. Uh, he's come up a couple times. He's got a beautiful red, maybe a GTS, I think, but a beautiful, beautiful red 991. And, uh, and he has an office right here in Toluca Lake, uh, if, uh, uh, right on the Burbank border. There, right in, as a matter of fact, right next to Bob's Big Boy, if you're a cars guy. And uh, holy cow, they got me in for, uh, you know all this already, but for everybody else, they got me in for one of those deep cleanings because they said, yeah, you, we're going to, if you're going to be our patient, we're going to start from scratch here. So they did the thing where they don't knock you out, but they full blown, you watched them give me the needles they and everything. They you like A couple crazy. different days worth of this process. <laughs> Uh, and they just went in there under the gums with machines and everything else. And anyway, I could not be happier. I am so grateful to the whole team over there at Raymond Ricci DDS. Uh, we've got, to obviously, Ray the dentist. And then we've got Michelle and Nicole and Trish. And everybody was just so stinking nice and so, so... Um, it was like they all had to, they were all nurses they were bedside men they're holding my hand and rubbing my shoulder and stuff it was, it was just really nice it was the greatest nice. experience of any medical experience i've had when they actually put me in the chair for like the procedure stuff you know they gave me a, one of those neck pillows that had like a little you know like a aromatherapy to it and they put the bose headset on uh, the quiet comfort so you, you know were the airplane just checked listening out. to new adele oh it was great <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, huge, huge, huge thank you. Thanks, uh, and highly recommend uh, 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 if you're in the Burbank or Glendale or North Hollywood, Toluca Lake area, highly recommend Raymond Rishi, R I C C I. Uh, Mrs. Ryan, we've got an East Coast feed and we've got a TBT because that's what we do on Thursdays. East what Coast would you feed. There please. we go. East Coast feed. Checking in with Danbury Chive, Steve Kaz, and I think Brooke. East Coast feed. Roll it out. Yes, you can see. 
Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, look, it's Brooke and the Kaz Man. We're going to get better in light, better life for production value. Production yeah, value. We're in the light. Good Brooke job. hates my hat. Yep. She thinks it's the worst. We just went to a date night. Where are we, babe? Talk, talk to Jay and Nicole. Can't hear you over the hat. You're an asshole. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> She's really great. Zaragoza. We're in New Milford, Mr. Ryan. This is Ryan. Bank Street. It's fucking cold. Whatever. It's goddamn Connecticut. It's fucking winter. Anyway, so we're on Bank Street in New Milford. Yeah. Where they filmed Mr. Deeds. Okay, you know, bye, the, guys. Oh, Mr. Christ. Deeds. Anyway, <laughs> we're just happy to be here. I just want to send you to random date and I picture. Look, she's running for the car that she can't get into. You know why? Because I have the keys. Isn't that Oh, that's bonus? actually it. And she loves the track hat. That's Woo! actually the Mr. Deeds pizza place. Love you guys. That's it. Yeah, look inside. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, good job, Kaz, man. That was Sorry cool. we talked over it. Uh, that was the actual Mr. Deeds pizza place from uh, the, the Adam Sandler that's movie. up in awesome. uh, Where they shot it up in New Milford, Connecticut. That's really Isn't cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You, you could The awning and everything was similar, but if you looked inside, it was the same. That's awesome. I love it, Kaz, man. Super neat. All right. Uh, uh, TBT. It's Thursday. You know what we do on Thursday. We take a trip down memory lane. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is not anything specific. It's everything we've been up to lately. This is from the first of the year up until the other day. Roll it, Hal. <laughs> I was inside. What happened? It's on the other side. Okay. Cool. So use the right door. The correct door. The right door? Hold up. Uh, it is packed. This is the uh, alley. Let's walk. Thank you, Telefunken. Uh, Jenny. People are always wondering what's it like to have a <laughs> All right. So that's what we've been up to lately. That was a crazy if anybody thinks we stay at home all the time, holy crap, that's only a month worth. 
Oh my gosh, and it certainly wasn't everything. That was it started to get long, so I was trying to cut shit out. Uh, there you go. That's what we've been up to. There's the I'd TBT. Like to. You were in that quite a bit, Mr. Kennel. Yeah, the, the <laughs> room. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that when you're in here, I guess. Maybe. Uh, Mrs. Ryan. Yes, sir. I think yep, dentist, Dr. Ray, dentist, TBT. It's time to ask the question. It's on everyone's mind. <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? <laughs> There's gonna be another Honey I Trunk the Kids. Woo! But you know who's gonna be in it? Rick Moranis. I know for the first time. In a long time, he's acting again. He stopped uh, acting after his wife got sick, yeah, and then passed away. Yeah, it's been like over 20 years, I think. The last, yeah, that's sure. It was probably 15 years ago I was doing that Ghostbusters thing way back with the uh, Aykroyd and uh, the other guys, and, and that was his answer way back then was he wasn't doing anything. It was at least that long ago. Yeah, well, I, I, it's, uh, the, oh, Josh Gad is going to play the kid. And I know Josh from forever ago, yeah, but like he's awesome, and it's great casting. He's gonna play the young, the kid, and he shrinks his family. Yeah, I buy it. I totally buy it. Yeah, he's perfect for that. It's great casting. Yeah. I can't wait to see. what We just they saw do. him in something else. What did we just see him in? Like the other day. Do you remember this? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring okay. to. He's in Frozen. <laughs> but we didn't that. see it. Wasn't that we didn't see it? I don't know. Hi, Josh. Um, Fanboys. I think of Fanboys. Wasn't he in that one? I don't think so. Oh, Shuggler was in that Oh, I was confused those two. Dang it. Everyone did. Yep. Oh, yeah. It, Josh Gad's in that new show with House uh, in the spaceship, like Wally or H- HBO. Uh, Terminal 5 or something. Yeah. It's a horrible name. It's the wrong. I, I, <laughs> and that was not the right name, but it's on uh, with Career Enthusiasm on Sunday nights. Oh, well, I, we need to watch that. Add that to the queue. Yep. Um, okay. Uber is trying out something new. It, they're trying it in Arizona. It's an 800 number. It's a free call-in number, mostly for old people. Um, but for Oh, people so you don't have to use the app. People that don't have <laughs> smartphones. So instead of call a cab, you call an Uber. Wow. Okay. It's the, No one knows what to make of any of this. I'm more inclined to use it, to be honest with you. I don't they, care for the apps. They don't want that. And so <sighs> that's the thing. And that's they're trying to figure out how to make it available, but not overused. But not for me. <laughs> Right? Well, because they probably know that. There'd be a heck of a lot of people who would probably rather do that. Yes, and they know that they've done this before. And The whole point to have a data, uh, in case you don't know this, the whole reason for these apps and everything is so they can get your data. If you're calling them up, uh, they can't, it's less, can't much that. less information they can get from that. And they have to pay someone to take your call when an app is just, oh, you right. can touch whatever. AI does it. Yeah, and that's free, supposedly. But uh, it's 833-USE-UBER. So we're not supposed to use it, but here it is. It's only in Arizona. I don't think you can get much out of it. But can I take an Uber to get to Arizona? I don't think so. Oh, I think it's local. Makes me really want to throw the card out the window. Whatever I can do to make that happen, (laughs) go for it. We'll see what happens with that. You never know. Um, Okay, Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, there is a new study, psychological study, that if you wear the shirt of your uh, something that smells like your significant other, uh, you can sleep better, and it oh. is on par with like taking melatonin supplements or like uh, sleep aids. Like it really does help. It affects the, your smell, your olfactory senses, and sleep. makes you think of who you love. Sleep's an interesting, weird thing because you can get all sorts of, you know, all those tapes, subliminal. Med- I think we took joking about uh, friends before, but wasn't weren't there tapes on yeah. friends? Yeah, smoking <laughs> Chandler <laughs> in the but it was, they a were ladies' for a woman one. Or so- yeah, was- exactly. <laughs> so he, we raised his estrogen levels. Rachel let him borrow a tape to stop but, smoking. <laughs> but point being, uh, uh, you know, the, the same thing for success. Uh, if you want to be more successful or earn, earn more money or you know whatever the heck it is, there's all sorts of uh, uh, things for that. And I feel like. Uh, uh, you're are you more maybe you would know this because of your dealings are you more susceptible to uh how does it work when you're asleep like are you in a beta state do you know any of that stuff yeah forgive me if you don't i do a, a little bit there's different layers of it so rem and the other one whatever that uh, whatever that's called um different l- kinds of sleep patterns of it have different results of what you're susceptible to you never know but uh 
loving your person, like it transferred that sense of comfort via smell. So. Having a partner is important. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, oh wow. That was a wrap-up. <laughs> wow. Holy cow. All right. Well, that's been... Uh. Oh, what's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Yay. Got one thing done today, He's Ryan. He's along. <laughs> Love that guy. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Are we good? Did we do it? Did we, get, we got to everything? I believe so. I think we did. I'm a little confused because multiple attempts. Uh, let us take a quick break, right? Sure. And then we're going to get our... <laughs> Multiple <laughs> Were attempts. Are you pointing at yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Multiple attempts. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. We are going to get our guest, Mr. Paul Kramer, in here in the late night play set in that chair right there. More to come right after this. More, more to come right after these messages from Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. <laughs> it's great on everything. But oh, Except oh, oatmeal. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I want to try it. Oh, so delicious, it's the hot sauce made by bears. Garlic and serrano, mixed with love and care. You can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg, it's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious, it's the hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce, great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. I just, probably one of those things you have to do several times to get into the vibe. You want to talk about it? Sure. No, it's not. I'm fascinated by it. I kind of, I'm bringing it back. I, the sleep, de- uh, they're not yeah, sleep deprivation. Uh, we're back and sensory we're deprivation. About sensory deprivation tanks that Joe Rogan talks about all the time on his yeah. show. Have you ever done it? So I did it once. Jennifer bought it for me as a, a birthday gift or some holiday gift. And it was really thoughtful because I had been talking about it because like we well, talked. wanted to do it. Already. I wanted to do it because like we were talking about escape, like. I love movies be, partially because of just that escape. You can just, for two hours, turn off. Part of the reason we like driving. Anything that takes enough of your focus away to th- so you don't have to think about other stuff, like to turn off. And the idea of, of these sensory deprivation was I get to turn off my brain and I get to turn off my body. Like I don't feel, you know, all the as you get older the That's stuff the that point, hurts right? to yeah meditate, you're supposed to like turn all but that i shit off. but like we're talking about i could picture a larry david episode because all i'm <laughs> thinking about is the you know like who else has been in this tank do they really <laughs> clean the water did they oh, wow <laughs> did, you know and then the traffic and then you're, you're like doing the opposite of what oh the i'm doing the opposite is. it's so quiet now that i can just let my brain rage and i'm like <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm like okay you, you look out the guy's like oh the time will go so quick and it was just like chick how long? Sick. How long are you in there? Is it an hour? Yeah, like easily. Minutes? No, it was. A, it might have been. It was sixty or ninety minutes. Oh, that's. In wild. fact, I came out earlier. I'm like, okay, I'm tap out. I'm done. Um, oh, really? And then they kept sending me like, "How was your experience?" And like, I'm just getting through telling Jennifer that I don't really want to go again. <laughs> I don't want to have to tell you that. I think if I could do it several times, I would. I, I'm. There, I think you just got to keep doing it until you you're. You can quickly adjust and let yourself maximize the result. Yeah. So and then uh, the people say eventually they just buy them. Yeah, Joe Rogan, like he got a couple of them, I think, up there at the uh, yeah at his studio. At his studio. See, so yeah, that's yeah, I could see that where you could just come home and you know, you're like right when you're ready to do it, you get in and and experience it. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, right when I was ready, I had to go get on the freeway for. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, no. He talks about like doing edibles and jumping in the tank and oh, that makes sense. How you're talking hours. about it, it's like how I used to get massages, and it's like it nullifies the whole point of going. Yeah, and, and I remember I I got um, I, I drove our Jennifer's old '67 bug there, thinking, oh, okay, this will this will kind of help nope. me escape. <laughs> this nope. just made it worse. I'm like, what's that new noise? <laughs> what's that smell? <laughs> I gotta fix that. <laughs> Gosh, you ever, are you, do you are, maybe this is more a thing about you than that actual therapy. Are you, mm. Can you ever relax at all? Mm. Every time I see you, you're always chill. You're always, you know, very c- c- calm, or at least you seem it, but you always have a million different things going on. It's so, uh, clients and yeah. stories you're writing and cars you're selling. I mean, I don't think I, I mean, I certainly wasn't treated for ADD, and I don't know if I would have been treated for it. Um, because I could focus. It would have given us Ritalin back then, right? Isn't that all it was? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it doesn't fix anything. No, no, it just masks it. Um, but I found myself, 
you know, I, I, I always, I mean, even as a kid, I, I, you know, my sister, she could be inside writing letters to a pen pal, doing quiet stuff. And I was just like, when do we go outside and blow something up? You know, action. breaks up. Yeah, action. And, and I think that's the same thing. Is that a personality thing between the two of you or is it a gender thing? Mm. More so. It could be either. Or uh, probably a little bit of both, but more just personality thing. I'm just, I'm just that way. And, and, the, and the irony is I love doing all the stuff. Like I had a friend tell me um, the other day, he's like, you go to more cars and coffee than anyone else. I said, no, you just see it more. But I love going to it. I like going to it more than being it. Like our, I love the lag event. The lag event, but I do well, get that's exhausted. Than the cars and coffee, because you are working. Forgive me for cutting you up. You mm -hmm. are working that entire time. Everyone is constantly just. <laughs> What's my car worth? What's next, my car worth? <laughs> just trying to be the next person question. in line to talk to you. Yeah, because they've got questions. Whether they want to buy your car or have you appraised their car right. or just. Are, have you ever seen one of these? I need to get with. They're just always asking you for your opinion, and you don't get to. Re that's not a cars and coffee for you. Mm -mm. That's a no, fucking Sunday sale, you know, super sale. I mean, it's neat to see. You know, I like the beginning as people are coming in, and I do like the end, and I like when Jennifer comes. But Love it's that. it's hard for me. Like I can't be with her there. Um, you know, it's just even when you guys come. I'll set up a little space, and then it's like you're adorable. I'm see you later. See you. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> Here's right. your heater. Go. It's great, and then everyone just comes over and sits with us. It's yeah, like, I love that. Yeah, so, but I think maybe that's the point is when I'm going and doing a cars and coffee, or coming up to Newcombs, it like I get to dictate my time. Like I can, and sometimes I know I do it. I'll someone will be talking, and I just kind of at the point where I'm done. And it's nothing with them, and I just. And now I'll just go, I, I know I do it because Jennifer will say something like, you just kind of left in the middle of this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> because my brain left a while ago. Yeah, you squirreled I, a while I, ago. I just, Squirrel. yeah, it, it, very much like that. And I'm like, ooh, did you see that Land Cruiser? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All your, you your mind's gone. Like that. mm -hmm. it, yeah. That's what all those events are about, really. And then sometimes, I don't know if you do this, you get to the event and you're like, I'll see someone else post stuff. I'm like, I I kind of regret not walking around enough, not oh, the, seeing enough cars. I'm like, that's I said every single time. I want to, and it's it is and it is a social event because it's one of the few times it may be a week or a month I get to see that person in a fairly relaxed situation. Yeah. So I I do, and we're very for. I mean, my people who you know friends and clients from the East Coast or in a bad weather areas. I mean, it's easy to forget how lucky we have it. Like I get up in the morning like. I mean, usually it was it Thursday. So Wednesday, I'm like, what am I going to do this weekend? Yeah, same and here. and you get to choose. Like, here's your There's cafeteria. Of options, yeah. yeah, I want this experience. I want these people. You know, whatever, whatever it's it like is. A Chinese menu. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're always hungry when you're done. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh, is there anything specific you want to talk about today? Um. Because I will forget our open house. Oh well, I have that stuff on here. Okay, yeah, yeah let's do it. Sure. Yeah, so it's so funny because there's a lot of open houses happening. So the lit this show, is lit week, yeah, or th this will be lit week. Yeah, the lit big two two weeks away. Yeah, a week from two weeks from tomorrow, so Friday the twenty eighth, and this is a leap year. Oh, it is. Right? Yeah, Saturday's the 29th. Yep. Um, so for those of you who are born on the 29th. <laughs> happy fifth birthday! <laughs> happy oh, that's birthday. interesting. So next, so next month will have a Friday the thirteenth in it. Is that how yeah. it works? Well, today's Thursday the 13th, and there's an extra, normally th February and March align because of the 28 days, but with 29, it pushes one, so we'll get a Friday. There the we go. Next month. Awesome. I'm going to celebrate right now. <laughs> <laughs> Here, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'll take a picture oh, of that. Great. Yeah, sure. There we are. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Nothing says February <laughs> like that. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, but anyway, um, you know, the... What most people don't realize with the Lit Show Weekend, I mean, this was pre-social media, pre-internet. I mean, there was there were not a lot of events, you know, all the different stuff we have. I mean, this was kind of the big event for 
the if U.S. It looked occult. It was like the big Porsche week. It was yeah. Porsche week. Yeah, I mean, it start, I started going to the Lit Show activities in the late 90s, and it had been you know, running for decades already. I mean, it was literally Hershey, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. They're big, which was kind of... That was more American stuff with Porsche and that coming in later on. Mm-hmm. And then it was this. And it was literally the Lit Show and then the swap meet. That's what I think of the next day at uh, Phoenix Club. At the Phoenix Club. But it used to be at Dunkel Brothers, Peter Dunkel Trucking, which was... Oh, no kidding. It was so good. Was it always the 356 Club, though? Isn't yeah. Isn't the Porsche 356 I mean, they kind of... Yeah, they kind of they kind of put it on. I mean, it really... The Lit... Sh- and, and I'm sure... Um, I think it's Bruce who owns Stoddard's now who puts it on he'll he'll correct me but i remember it started as the lit show and it was always in by lax so people can fly in and this was before internet and this was really the only way to find some of this rare stuff you know because there was swap meets going on around the country but there really wasn't a swap meet for owners manuals and kind of the weird paraphernalia that goes with it and then from that you know it's like hey what do we do with transmissions and engines you can't bring them into the lax hilton or whatever <laughs> <laughs> so um and I, I think peter dunkel is who started and he used to be uh you know he's a trucking company a mover, professional mover professional mover big, yeah big equipment mover. he has a he had a huge property right near uh anaheim stadium and we would meet there and and peter dunkel such a interesting i mean i've been fortunate to talk to him a little bit but i don't know him that well and i hear more stories from his friends who are friends mm-hmm. of mine but I think he was looking for a platform to be creative, and he just started going nuts. He would have uh, his wife's four cam speedster hanging from the tree like a pinata, because he had all his equipment. Oh so he god. would. Oh my gosh, he could rig anything. He could rig anything. <laughs> so you would go in there and imagine like dingle balls with lights at Christmas, but they're actual cars. Oh. I used You're to looking go to at a Christmas party at Granger every year. It was the same kind of company where they just did rigging and yeah. it was the same type of thing. Wow! I mean, it was ridiculous. You, you go there, it became a spectacle. Like, what? What are they going to? What do is Peter going to do with his wife's car this year? And multiple cars. But I'm picturing gods must be crazy with the Land Rover up in the tree. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, what the hell did you do that for? Yeah, yeah. and his Coke bottle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, yeah. So, um, and then finally, one year he built like the proverbial barn find. It was he dug a mine into his property. And he stuffed a rare 356 down in there. Come on. Oh, it was insane. How cool is that? It was really good. And then I'm picturing Back to the Future 3 with the mine. Yeah, and then someone got hurt in you know, the litigious part of that. And it was really a shame because I talked to him. He's like, he wanted to do it. But he did find a new place, which is the Steve McQueen show. Mm-hmm. And that is really Peter Dunkel being the cool creative guy that he is. Um, if you, you did you go last year mm-hmm. with the fire trucks and everything else inside it was awesome i mean was gliders awesome. yeah <laughs> it's just, it's so when you when you come from that background of what the swap meet used to be and you're like oh this is just so peter dunkel yeah i mean it's such a cool thing to see him kind of get crazy and do fun stuff and obviously for a good cause um and it really was it was be, it quickly was a car show with some parts and now it's evolved into this whole weekend and and actually, the we were supposed to go on the Hill Country Rally, and they relocated it to this Lit Show weekend. Oh wow! So it is a I, I like driving better, but you know this is also they don't usually conflict, right? No, I don't know why they they said they moved it for better weather, and I'm like, wait, every year we go, it rains at least one or two of the days, <laughs> and it's a month later. How's how's that work? <laughs> Maybe it's south of the equator now. Um, so it really started. We started. Well, actually, we ho- there was a period when Peter Dunkel said, I don't want to be involved with this for because, you know, people walk on his property and people were being litigious about stuff. And it was kind of a shame. Mm-hmm. And so we it was scrambling. Like, what are we going to do? And Auto Kennel. Replace this? Yeah, Auto Kennel. We were at a different location, our first location by the airport on Red Hill. We were literally a block down the street from where Jeff Swart was at. Where he is now. Where he is now. Okay, wow. And so I... We opened our business, had been only open for like a year or two, and I'm like, hey, we'll do it here. And it worked out perfect because I was building some hot rods. You know, this I did some safari builds back then when oh everyone was like, Look at you. I should have sent you a picture of one. That. And they're like, why would you do that to a 911? I'm like, Look where you can go with that. <laughs> I remember that. It was a Martini East African Safari it's replica. Really cool. And it was fun. I mean, I we took it to Monterey, and, you know, anywhere I could find dirt, I would just be 
you know, that person, you know, blazing around the dirt um, before social media could really. Was it count. a Rothman's uh, livery? What uh, Mar- the- it looked oh, Martini. Uh, Martini. Said, yeah, okay. the East African Safari car. Cool. And we bought, S- we did five or six of them. And they're still floating around there. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank you. And um, so That's I just. That's awesome considering where they are now. I mean, now there's, there's Baja I d- competitions. I didn't inspire it. It's just, I had an idea. And I'm like, why aren't people doing this? And if there was social media, it might have done something, but it just kind of. I think people are like, why would you? This is when people were slamming their cars and making yeah. them lower, and I was doing. You're going the opposite. Oh yeah, yeah totally well, the opposite. Is, so I am. <laughs> yeah. Zig so so uh, meanwhile, we had, we had like two or three of these builds going on. I had torn the whole interior out. So I was. It wasn't that I was that altruistic about finding a place for the swap meet. I had a shit ton of stuff I wanted to get rid of, and I'm like, <laughs> if we host it, they're gonna all come in, and it and it actually worked out good and bad. It was a torrential monsoon during the swap meet. So all the guys who set up, we, we had this building in the back. We had a big parking lot, you know, easily 500 cars. Oh, whoa. And and it was just because it was a bunch of buildings, but they were all, you know, during the week, work week, they were busy. But during the week, weekend, no one was there. And we just, um, they all set up early in the morning. And then the, and I had set up all my stuff inside. I'm like, eh, I'll just put all my parts. And I had a friend helping me sell and we were, taping stuff off the monsoon hit and everyone was in my shop and i and we sold like all the parts we sold the cars like it, wow. imagine i mean it was definitely the the least attended year for many reasons but but inventory gone imagine the size of our <laughs> shop now it was a little smaller than that and we had probably 500 people in there that is Good grief. it was packed, packed. it Good was grief. packed and i remember you know, like pretty soon people are trying to buy like just our regular stuff on the walls. I'm like, I'm like telling our friend, nope, that's not for sale. Like, in fact, everyone, nothing is left for sale. <laughs> wow. And, um, that's and the best the, yard the sale. register. Yeah. So, and then we kind of didn't do anything with it. It finally found its place at Phoenix club and we didn't get involved with it. And, um, and then about, this will be our 12th one, 11th or 12th one at our place and a friend came by and he said open house open house yeah. so and, but, but part of this is this whole portion week is all the different places have their own oh, houses because yeah. everyone's but, in but town. no one had it was just the lit show the swap meet and john wilhoyt would kind of open a shop up on friday and there was another guy i'm sorry i can't remember the name talented fabricator but it was, it was kind of podunk okay. and i got in a bunch of cars and this was you know, 2009, and the recession had was in full swing. And we, this is really when we shifted from selling late model Porsches to vintage. And picture our shop now. I mean, it was, we had 20 early 911s in there. Wow. Only early 911s. It was just stuffed. And a guy came in, he's like, you guys should just have an open house. I mean, look at all these cars in here. And, and we just started doing it. And now there's three days and bus tours and, and, you know, I, I like I like doing it because it's like the lazy auto kennel, but instead of concentrating into two hours, it kind of goes all day. Mm-hmm. So we'll go through waves. I mean, oh, here's the pizza wave. Here's the coffee wave. Yeah. Here's the we're leaving more wave, but why are you, you still here? A little more manageable. Yeah, it is more manageable. And some people just like come in and sit and like, all, can I get you anything? They're just there all day. I'm like, wow, all right. Hi. But it's cool. <laughs> and it's, and it's the end of the day, it's why we do... There's other ways to skin a cat and make money, and the only reason we do this is, or at least for me, is that it's it's fun. You enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That goes a long way. Yeah, the people. I mean, generally, I was thinking about it. You know, all the clients we deal with, I mean, they're really great people. Not all of them. You can't hit a thousand, <laughs> but but considering how many, and I was thinking about it, you know, we've we've just got yesterday our 1,121st consignment car. Whoa. It's just me and my dad. So 10 ago, it was the 1111. I want to know whose car that was. I was thinking of you. I um, bet. And, it, and, it, and I was hope like, when you get to these milestones, you hope it's a car that is special. Like, and, it, and it actually was. It was, uh, I should have sent you a picture. It was, an M th- it was a, the E36 M3 lightweight. lightweight. Oh, that is a special car. And, and I told you I love that car from and back I, in the day. And not only that, you know, I've sold, been fortunate enough to sell a bunch of them, including some of the ones to Paul Walker, but that was... I had sold that one. That was the second time selling it. And that one had the special motor. And it was like, because that car generally is sort of the emperor has no clothes. Like, 
it's a really special car, but when you drive it, you're like, I don't get it because it's... Well, it's not that different. But that one had the motor that... The holy grail of motors. And like everyone who Wouldn't was around it... Euro. It had a Euro. It's called a... This is going to get nerdy. It's an S52 or S50 B32, which was the European... The best motor that they sold to the public that went in street cars in Europe that you could get. So instead of 245... So it's a 240 had, at uh, 321 horsepower. That's a huge bump. Huge difference. In an E36, staggered wheels then. S- uh, staggered wheels, same size tires. Yeah. It's it, Oh, what? That's how the BMW did it. <laughs> in 95. Oh, wait, was the lightweight only 95? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. They were. They were the square. And square a lot of that tires. has to do with homologation. I mean, it's there's a really... It, mm-hmm. it, the car is cooler in story form than driving. Like, you can go buy a really... We, we sold a couple really nice low mileage m3s that were in the thirty thousand, you know today and that car sold you know the lightweights were selling for one hundred and thirty thousand. and that's crazy and then you get to the point where is it really it's not you know nine times or six times the experience no it's and it was a fifty thousand dollar car or whatever that was what the sticker was 46 and they were given away in the 30s because no one was going to buy them they said i looked back at all the ones we've sold they averaged almost a year on sitting on the the dealer lot Oh my! Because you go into the dealer, and don't forget, the '95 M3. Um, you know, when you produce a car, it comes out in the fall of the year before for the model year, and it ends in the summer of the year of ish, the model year. Ish. So '95 M3s were built in September of '94 till July, August of July of '95. This one didn't show up at the dealers until two phases: September and uh, October or November '95. Oh. Meanwhile. In the dealership, the 96 was there. The 96 had a bigger displacement motor, made same power because most people didn't know what was going on with smog. Staggered wheels. Staggered wheels, air conditioning, all this stuff, and it cost less. So you walk in the dealer, and they're like, no, no, it's a special it's edition. A special year-old one. And they're like, brand new oh, you guys are just trying to move the old inventory. Yeah. Like, who gets a car without Did air conditioning? Did the lightweight have radio or air conditioning? It didn't have either one, right? Yeah. No, it, it, it wasn't like the, R- the RS America, you can get some options and put it back in. Lightweight the lightweight came one way. No no radio, no air conditioning, no sound ending. I mean, it was... And then when I got into club racing, there was... I mean, at one point on the West Coast, this is a car that they produced 125 of. Not very many. And I remember we Are did... Are you serious? Oh, that's it. That's why they're so expensive. But I've seen so many in my life, you know, call it five, six, seven, whatever it's been, well, it was... not including the Paul Walker collection, you know what I mean, but throughout my life. So there's, I've seen a, a good percentage of the ones that are out there. It was just easy to... All you do is put a, buy the sticker kit and the wing. For someone make it look like... Oh, everyone did. It was a it was a very the, cool. The lightweight look. had the uh, convertible wheels, though, right? The light the the lightweight or uh, the five spoke. They were yeah the motorsport wheels, but they looked wheels. just like the stock ones. The only difference was the lightweight ones were said motorsport on it. They were they were like uh, embossed. Oh, those I'm thinking of the ones that later had the five point star. They were like that, dual that five spoke. Con- yes, exactly. They split dual spoke. Yeah, uh, that came on the the cabriolets. Yeah, they're they're. So that's not the lightweight wheel. It was a regular lightweight wheel. The, well, I can't remember exactly. I have to look at the picture. Again, I remember what you're talking about though. The '95 said motorsport around the hub, but and the uh, that was only didn't. for the lightweight ones, and they were actually a magnesium alloy. Because I remember we were fixing one, and the the wheel guy was there on the wheel lathe and kind of you know trying to take curb rash out of one that we sold years ago. And he's be. like, "What are these made of?" And and I go, "Why?" He's like, "That's magnesium. It's like these these things are like heating up way too quick." I mean, we were kind of nervous. And I can't put them off. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> John so, Yeah, so, um, but, you know, and that was, like a lot of cars, you, you, th- that car became a unicorn. It was built up to this legendary status, and now it's a 20-year-old car. You go get in one, and you're like, I, what's the... I know Matt Ferris talked about it. We haven't, I haven't talked to him in person. He, he's, you know, over the whole thing about lightweights and i understand why but this what was cool about this motor was it wasn't just the best motor in europe but in the u.s the team that ran all of bmw motorsports which was back east in virginia near near um vir Mm -hmm. they if you were racing a bmw under the bmw motorsport flag with corporate, you know, factory help, you bought all, like Andal, you'd buy all your parts from them. Mm-hmm. They would prepare the car. Right. Well, all the lightweights generally went through there, got the wing and all the other stuff. 
the motor from that car was basically the motor that they ran in Grand Am and all that. This was an extra unused fresh motor in a crate. Mm -hmm. And the first owners of this car actually ran were BMW factory racers. And they got a lightweight thinking it'd be cool to have a street version of what they race. And they got in and they're like, this thing's kind of sucks. And then they didn't keep it very long when they sold it to the next guy. He worked with Tom Milner and got one of the factory race motors that was supposed to go in the race car. Hmm. Obviously not smog legal, but the car's on its way to Texas anyway. Gotcha. So that's why it was special. It, if somebody did that to that it car. It wasn't just a European motor. It was a but, factory but, but race someone, motor. Yeah, right, and, right, right. I mean, just to give you... And it's hard coming from a Porsche perspective. So, Well, isn't it the same as like having an Andile, en an, an Andile prepared engine in your car? Yeah, it would be like having a factory, like Le Mans motor, prepared by Andile, and then you just stuck it in your nine, you know, 964. Look at that. Yeah, man, just came out. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Wow. That I'm never sorry. happens. That never happens. A lot of firsts. Just like you. Yeah, a lot of firsts today. She smells, uh, she smells auto kettle. Our cat. <laughs> we are cat people, too. How many do you have? Two. Oh, I, I we got one broken one. Well, we used to have a broken one too. <laughs> yeah, this this one's made of glass. Oh, ours oh. was just not fully developed. <laughs> oh. She was broken like I'm broken, <laughs> not no. fragile no. like you're. No. Well, this one birth defects too. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And you know, the, you know, the doctor's looking like her hips don't really go in the sockets. Mm. <laughs> Is that why she <laughs> she, she, she she walks? Like a, a, a van that had been like hit in yeah, an accident, not aligned bent, right. Bent frame. You know, they kind of go sideways down the street. That's how she, Aww. like, look at her one day and like, man, that cat, cat walks weird. Dysplasia. So, yeah, she broke her, dislocated her hip a couple times. She broke her uh, kneecap. Wee. Which it's, Who it's, knew cats had kneecaps? Which is really encouraging <laughs> when the vet is looking at this saying he's never seen this before. Meanwhile, he's FaceTiming another friend vet going, check this out. And like, what happened? And I'm like, you know, do I get a break on the? Screen? She didn't want to pay the vig and hey. broke, her, <laughs> broke her kneecap. So, um, and All now right, so the recent thing is she broke her ankle. How I, old is this cat? Really? She's like Since she I just turned that? three, two and a half, three. Dude, this is a long. Th Fortunately, one of my clients sells pet insurance. <laughs> oh, okay, good. As long as you're. After the first, after the kneecap I mean, episode, is, is the poor little thing happy when she's not? healing she she needs human attention like most animals need food she just craves human attention so she's pissed that she's in a you know we got the largest dog cage we could and she's been in there for two months now because she she reopened and re-engined her her leg so i was gonna t i'm gonna take a picture of you but i was gonna t the whole thing here is just, this never happens <laughs> she's usually locked up in the other room you know who would jennifer would love really because she when she was here last she went in in the room and, oh, and pet meow meow really so and and the cat was okay with it because she's not great with it yeah things. no you were oh, saying good. something like she and jennifer was not a cat person until she met me and it she was a hey there kitty it's adorable Going, to, going away. Is this like the guy who lives underneath the stairs? <laughs> yes, Chris Elliott. Oh, my God. This does feel like uh, Life with the Ryans. We are definitely at home today. <laughs> yeah. So, But anyway, um, yeah, that was uh, to way go off tangent. That was but car, so car 1111 was a car that I thought about because MV I know Lightweight. you liked BMWs. And then uh, the and the and uh, back to the open house. What is the time on the open house on the 28th of February? It's, it's oh, uh, what is the time? I don't know. I'll be at Breakfast Club for the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of goes, I mean, it's so funny. I put out email. It says one thing. My dad has on our website something else. That's why I'm asking. It, one thing said noon. One thing says 10 <laughs> till 4. 10 is probably me. Okay. <laughs> noon He's is definitely my four. dad. Okay. <laughs> my dad's like, we don't need it, people. Because <laughs> when we say 10. Um, they show up at 830, right? That's, that's yeah. yeah. It's a combination of uh, older and Porsche. So... <laughs> You know, like the blue hair special. Well, Zwart but, and I joke about that all the time. But like we're – earlier is better. Earlier is better. Earlier yeah. is just better. If you want to meet at 445 for a coffee or whatever, great. I'll be there. Yeah. But you I want mean, to – like at 1045, I'm out. We're usually there, you know, 8 o'clock setting up. And there's some people who just show up. Um, you know, it's kind of, I think, sort of the swap meet mentality. You know, get there while the good stuff – Oh, uh, early uh, – what is it? The worm. Yeah. Early, early bird catches the worm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And and I think uh, there's um, that mentality. But And then 
You know, I think my dad's time frame would be like noon to two. <laughs> well, that's how you, yeah. <laughs> but it's, that's the lag. Two hours is not enough time yeah. for you because you're ten, on the whole time. Yeah, 10, I think generally it's about some people, really 10 o'clock, around 11.30 noon, we have pizza. We usually oh. do two waves of pizza, good pizza, not Domino's. So we get... I'm just it, trying to think, how long would it take for us from Newcombs at noon to oh. get down to Costa Mesa? Oh, it's, oh, I, I know, it's when I leave um, Breakfast Club. It's about an hour and a half. An hour and a half to an hour 45. Um, two hours tops. <laughs> two hours Two hours tops. <laughs> 15 max, if there's traffic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's not, and it'd be It's great. not brutal. It's an hour with no traffic. And if the road is open the rest of the way. To Wrightwood? It's actually easier because you're just moving. Yeah, you go. You obviously get a lot more driving, and then you're going against traffic. What do you do from there? Six oh five down, or how do you get down? Uh, it sounds like the satellite skip. <laughs> <It's, laughs> California. What California. are you doing <laughs> here? Yeah, <laughs> Sepulveda, <laughs> La Cienega. What are they called? The San Fernandos. The Californians. Oh, the Californians. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Good job. Um, hey, Bill Hader and uh, Kristen Wiggs and that yeah, one too. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are you doing here? And it's so and it's so funny because we. When I'm like back east or somewhere or in Texas and we're talking to people, nope. we talk like that and they're like, you sound just like that. And just like, like the sketch, yeah. So we do. You get 10 freeways to go an hour. Yep. Um, and like, hour? Like, oh, yeah, we don't do miles. No. It's time. That's pointless. <laughs> miles are, yeah. Like the trucking guy, like truckers, when they call, I'm, they're coming to pick up a car and I've learned how to speak, you know, Russian trucking. Um, <laughs> they, they basically go, uh, they go, I go, so they're like, I'm picking up the car today. I'm like, all right. He goes, I'll be there s- about 45 minutes. I'm like, where are you? <laughs> oh, this was the other day. This yeah. even happened. Yeah, yeah, where are you? You know, and they're like, I'm in Studio City. And it's Friday, 3 o'clock. <laughs> nope. Three nope. hours away. Nope. Yeah, yeah you're going to have to get a motel. <laughs> so, sleep in the cab. <laughs> Do some crank. <laughs> so anyway, the... Um, uh, you come out the back way, and it's just basically the uh, 15 to the 91, and there's oh, a toll to the road, okay. and the 91 turns into the 55, and and you're already down there at that point. <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like it. It was what it, someone said like, and, and we we're the only ones who put the in front of everything. I had to get used to that too. The 15, the well, 91. Do you know what the four- that's all about? Somebody told me it's because they used to not say the numbers. They used to refer to it as Golden State or the California or whatever. They wouldn't use the names. Like, so you oh, would get on the Hollywood The San freeway, Fernando Freeway. The, that's what somebody told me when I first moved here. I don't know that it's – this is the days of Thomas Guides and stuff, so I don't know if it's true or not. So what would you say without it? Don't you need an article in English language? Like, So I'm going to take On the East Coast, 10? I would take 95 to yeah. 84 to whatever, the you know. We took 490 to blah, so blah, blah. So I wonder which one from a – uh, English standpoint is correct. I don't know if either is right or wrong. Yeah. So, but anyway, the, the end result is it's almost the same amount of time there as going go. going one way or the other, and you end up with no traffic and more mountain driving. That's great. So, on that day, you you actually you could see it when you come up to Newcombs from the front from the uh, La Cunada way because I think they have a sign saying it's closed. Oh yes. So you'll know then, and if it isn't, you just like we did that one day and go through Wrightwood and. All that good stuff. That so, was great. The day we went to uh, Grizzly. Not, I always say that wrong. No, that's right. Grizzly Cafe. Finally, yeah. And when I met Jennifer, uh, when I met Jennifer, she lived. Jennifer Kennel. Yeah, she lived in Wrightwood. Before she was a kennel. Before she was a kennel, she was a. She uh, lived in Wrightwood. She lived in Wrightwood. She lived there for ten years or so. Really? Oh yeah. It that was surprises me just because she seems like she wouldn't be out in the middle of nowhere. Jennifer Kennel, I had no idea. Yeah. No, she'll tell you about. It. She liked. It. I'll She's ask got you. some great stories because imagine. By herself, she rented a little house, and she had a neighbor nope. that was kind of creepy. Oh, I bet. Because when I first met her, she had like these size fourteen boots sitting in front of her house in the back. I'm like, what's was that, that about? To scare people away. Yeah, there's a man living here, <laughs> big old man. Wow. Yep. Good for her. Oh, she, she's. I, I mean, I'm really glad that she didn't have a confrontation because she's kind of got that Chihuahua where she barks really <laughs> loud and then just goes barreling behind the fence. But uh, yeah, she was she was a little badass. So. Gosh, uh, can we talk about yep. your new merch coming out? Yeah, It'll be out in time. I'm, for I'm the not bit. wearing it, but I got the hat. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for it. Uh, it was kind of our delay. Actually, it was the the big delay was trying to find women's shirts. Oh. So yeah, we had women's shirts last time, and they sold pretty quick. Um, and so I just let 
Jennifer picked that out and we've must have bought 10 or 15 different shirts for her to try until I was like, okay, it's go, got to go to printer. And one of our clients... And different samples for her to try the fitting. And yeah, stuff, just, I gotcha. like once you find one, so we're going to have a long sleeve black women's shirts and short sleeve white women's shirts. And they're, as I learned with women, they're longer. Good. So they kind of come down longer um, and they, you know, smaller shoulders. They're not what we like just in tiny sizes that don't fit right on women. Thank so, you for saying that. That's a big difference. A lot of people do do that, and they think, look, we offer stuff for women. That's not well, it's exciting when we go to events and we see the women wearing our shirt because we put a lot of time and thought. I mean, all the design on our shirts, which I'm not even wearing one, um, has uh, is designed by the one of the top designers at Porsche. So Torsten Klein, who works for Porsche, uh, he did the Auto Kennel logo 20-some years ago. And then when we did the shirt run the first time, that kind of um, uh, Warhol looking with all the different cars coming out of the kennel, yep. he did all of those. And I said, can I? It's the back on uh, It's the back the of the shirt. shirt. Yeah. yeah. And it's got a Ferrari and a Volk. It's cars we like. And um, uh, will you ever do one with a Porsche in the logo, even though your logo has a <laughs> uh There is on that shirt you're talking about, the back, the main one is a... 930 coming out of the back. There are four, so there's no main there's one. There's six. Oh, there's six? There's six. So there's definitely no so, main one. Well, <laughs> if you look at it, there's two that are the main one. They're in the middle, and they share. It's a, it's a tile with two on uh, three on one side, three on the other. Mm -hmm. And the, the middle one is a oh. only one going the other direction. It's a 930 with the back end out. Most of them so have the front out. Uh, but the question is, will you ever, like, will there ever be anything individualized? Not really, because that's not your logo. Oh, just like have a Porsche change yeah. it. I'd love to put uh. a sticker of yours on our car, but I'm not a Lambo guy. <laughs> Johnny Lieberman. But Johnny Lieberman is. He's like, I, I, you know, I love Auto Kennel. He's the only guy with a Porsche with a Lambo on the door. You know, I never thought of it. I wasn't trying to be ironic. It's just the car I liked. Yeah. You know, and it was. Well, it's identifiable. And it was way before I was doing this. I'm like, you know, we started Auto Kennel. It wasn't, oh, we're going to sell Porsches. It just became that. Well, you sell everything. You just we sell everything. I would say, but 75% of it's. Porsches and and I would say most of it's over ten years old, um, but we're getting a cool bus. It's literally on a truck right now from Oregon. That's very cool. It's you mean a, on consignment or you consignment? Guys are getting, oh, okay. uh, the, the owner of it. I went up in Oregon and looked at it. And the Oregon he wants me to buy it, and Jennifer wants me to buy it, and Jennifer wants that Target. Too, and though. the Ed doesn't want <laughs> me to buy it. Where are you going to put it? Buy? That's, usually the, That's usually the question. Um, it's a sixty-five single cab. And it kind of has sort of safari stance with knobby tires. Mm. And it's got a modern water-cooled Volkswagen diesel motor. And it goes, it's like 250 horsepower and God knows how much torque. Where's the uh, uh, radiator? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. You know my point, though. Yeah. That's always with the oh, it's, with it's, on the, it's on the side where, you know, the vent, the air that would come through on a bus. It's oh, down so lower. Oh, that's what they do. Okay. That makes it's sense. in the back. Um, and I drew, it looks totally stock, period. And then, with power. and then when you step on it, I mean, he sent me this video last night on the freeway and it just walked away from this <laughs> other car with the biggest black diesel cloud coming out of the back of the car. <laughs> it's very cool. It'll be a fun, wow, fun toy. When's it get here? Tomorrow. Wow. Part of the reason I can't make breakfast club tomorrow because it's supposed to be here in the morning. We'll see. Well, you were there last week. I wouldn't expect to see you again right No, away. I actually, we got nine new cars in. Since yeah. lag last week? Holy crap. Wow. Yeah, there you're only seeing part of it on the website and then we've got two or three coming in. We got a really cool Alfa Romeo Duetto first year, really really early one, the nice car. Um it's a, it's it's the best way to think of it is it's the car uh in The Graduate, the movie The Graduate. So, it's Okay. They end up calling edition The Graduate, but this is a 66, the one in The Graduate was a 67. So, <laughs> Makes all the difference. All the details. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of buying cars, you made an impulsive purchase recently. <laughs> your words. I know. Can you tell everybody about it? Yeah, I just bought... What's your latest car, Paul Kettle? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, this is your car. This is a car this that is my you car. bought for you. What most people don't understand is I don't buy cars to sell. I buy cars to keep, and eventually I sell them, usually not because there's an a value attached to it more that I just don't have a use for it. You know, I'm, 
I've scratched that itch. And part of the reason why we own Auto Kennel is I just knew I couldn't afford to buy all these cars, but I wanted to experience a lot of cars. And uh, one of the cars we talk about, most of cars are a nostalgia-based urge. And this was, uh, it's a 1987 Zuzu Impulse mm -hmm. RS Turbo, uh, which my dad doesn't, he he understands it. It's special to people my age. In the days of Radwood, <laughs> now that we're in this, now right. that we've gotten to this point in life, it is special. It right. is neat. It is cool. Because it didn't a survive. A year ago, it was a piece of shit. And, oh, yeah. And it might be in five years from now. I don't know. I wrote a... But right now, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. It, it's kitschy cool. It is kitschy cool. That, that's not why... I mean, part of it was an obsession, but... You know, you loved it back then when it was out, when it was... Yeah, there's a... I wish I could... My dad's still looking for it. There is a... There's a picture of me next to this, not this exact car, but it looked just like it at the LA Auto Show. My dad and I would go every year to the LA Auto Show, and it's me. I was probably 14 or 15. Like, I was oh, just getting shit. ready to drive. And, like, there's, yes, we want a Lamborghini, but then there's the, the realm of possibility. You know, like an E30, a BMW 3 Series, not going to happen. But, like, this. In Isuzu. It Doable. could, it's do. it was expensive. It was 16 grand in 87 and a Scirocco was not too far off, which they look almost the same because there's the same designer. It is a, they it, made. And DeLorean, right? Jajaro or Gugaro, Jajaro. whatever his name is. Jajaro did the That's DeLorean. They're all so very similar. Yeah, there's, uh, Jajaro did a lot of really strange designs. And then From some. From the Lotus Elise to the, the Scirocco though, definitely, right? Both definitely. Yeah, he did the first gen rabbit. He did? Mm-hmm. Oh, so that. That makes sense because it's all got that same thing. That's the wet, and that was kind of the era, the wedge kind of but thin even, front, thin and the the squ I'm just thinking the the grill work and the lights. Yep, from as narrow as you possibly could and make the car work. Um, and your he, car more than any of them, it's just a tiny. Little oh yeah, and that was actually the design. It was supposed to be the second gen Scirocco, and his design house designed it for Volkswagen. And the the saying is basically Volkswagen kicked him out, fired him stole the design he went and took it right over to Zuzu and made it and they made it so if you look at the car it looks proportionally very similar same lines and remember that the Scirocco was a front-wheel drive car this is a rear-wheel drive but if you look at the front overhang over the front tires it was designed you could see the design was for a front-wheel drive application so they've got a lot of you know, superfluous design there they didn't really need, but it's wild. Yeah, and and it makes me like it even more though that it was actually a next generation Scirocco. Yep, that's exactly what it, it was supposed to be, and I think it, it was a little more avant garde than I think Volkswagen wanted to go. It was, I mean, if you look at that car, it's got some weird design <laughs> elements to it, and I think that's why I one we we're talking about. I was never, you know, like oh, it has to be a manual and rear wheel drive. The mechanics of it in the zero to sixties. You probably didn't even get that at the time, right? I kind of got it, but you know, I didn't. It wasn't the focus. I just was drawn to really interesting design, and that car. If you think about what the landscape looked like, picture all the Japanese cars of the eighties: the Hondas, Toyotas, Nissans. They kind of look like a fridge drawing for a little kid. You mm -hmm. know, just tr trunk, whatever, With hatchback. A on it. Yep. And this came out. And it's like this is bizarre looking. The wheels are bizarre. And this was really, I started, it wasn't, I, I always liked it, and I just forgot about it 10 years ago. Completely like, and then something 10 years ago, like, what, you know, you're sitting there going, like, what happened to all those cars? Where did those cars go? Yeah. Like, you don't even see shitty ones on the street. Like, nope. it's like someone hit the light switch, and all of a sudden, all these cars that I used to look at in, you know, 80s was one of the most impressionable times. I'm getting ready to drive them. Like, where do they all go? And they just flat out disappeared and then you know and and i think radwood is really what forced people to go find these cars a little harder and bring them to the forefront so now they save the ones that haven't died yet yeah i mean so i kind of was doing a passive search you know I'd every once in a while if i had time i'd be on craigslist or whatever and it's like and you'd find like one and it looked like it was just pulled out of a hole i mean just looked like you're looking at it going, it is an Azusa Impulse, but like, <sighs> the impulse is and fast. it's only a thousand bucks, but like, it just, like, it's a thousand dollar headache. Yeah, that's it, exactly what it is. You, you get it and you're going, okay, we're going to find everything. But I remember the Impulse as just being kind of a med, med black car. 
yours is different because it's got a manual transmission, six speed manual transmission. No, 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 no. five speed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so but eighty-seven more horsepower. Yeah, eighty-seven. Well, the first ones were kind of econo boxes. They had a a little two liter motor, four cylinder, kind of a dumbed down one hundred and ten horsepower. What you would find in a lot of you know Japanese cars, just economy motor, mm -hmm. and then. They came out a couple years before my model with the turbocharged intercooled, and all of a sudden it went from like 110 horsepower to 140 and like 100 and almost 170 pound feet of torque. So they were relatively quick. They were rear wheel drive, which was odd because most of the Japanese cars in the 80s were front wheel drive. Yep. So in 87, transverse mounted four, transverse mounted four, and in 87, uh, they for, I don't know if it was just probably because they were struggling selling these cars, they were. They were they were like Scirocco price, European price, but Japanese, and you know people weren't ready for. And it was very weird. It was not conventional. So the only Isuzu I remember selling well was the Trooper. The Rodeo never did very well. The Rodeo was a pa Honda Passport. It was a handful right. of badge overs. And the, but did Isuzu were they a big company? Did they sell a lot of cars here? I think well, trucks, I trucks. The only name I know. Isuzu was they were the known trucks. for trucks. Okay. I mean, they were they still they still sell trucks. Yeah, yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Um, cab box trucks. All yeah, time. yeah. You, I'd say they're pro that's probably what they always okay. have been or mostly okay. been. So, anyway, the um, this, so they made this special, and this is why I really liked it at the time. It came one flavor that you couldn't get options for. Well, you could, you can get an automatic. God, I don't even know if you can get an automatic in, in that. But it was the turbocharged motor, but it was always, all of them were white. It has kind of a tweed interior. I mean, it's, it's that sounds better than it is, but it's no, so... No, it's uh, that <laughs> stuff I know you're talking about. It's, like, yeah. Our Omni had the same kind of material. It's like the lining of a of a professor's sport coat kind of tweet is the closest thing but it's like vinyl on the sides and then the top has a whatever that texture is right the well it's surfaces. it's everywhere it's on the door panels right right but the surface like the seating surface and the back is i don't even think it's vinyl it's plastic maybe <laughs> <laughs> i don't know there's there's a lot of plastic there's a lot of plastic but when you sit in the cockpit i mean you, you're you're going most people could not handle this and there's literally all of the controls are on these two bin of pods that go on the side of the it's like a Z, like a 300Z of the old days, Yeah, right? but there's literally, the only thing over that's not on there is the radio. And there's little buttons, and they have the weirdest icons. They'll have, like, for air to hit your face is a silhouette of a woman with her long hair blowing. And for <laughs> air to your feet is, like, a woman's high heel boot. Like, And then the, the vent Sexy. on the left side, <laughs> because this binnacle <laughs> takes up so much space, very driver-centric, the vent, if you want air to come from the left vent it actually you pull it up and it periscopes up about four inches so it could actually get over the binnacle there's holy crow um so cigarette weird. lighters like so you have each door has its own cigarette lighter so i'm using it to drive and i've got radar detector plugged into the right door the phone plugged in and it's kind of these wires and then you forget and you swing open the door and your phone just goes <laughs> 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 it's but you know you know it, it's just it's very I, I love the strangeness of it and uh so i found it, it was up in san jose and i i drove up i flew up to san jose and met the guy and it was kind of i don't do i don't do that part of the business very often i don't go buy cars and go out and look at them and it I've only done it a handful of times, and um, it was definitely an impulse buy because I didn't take any of my own advice. I didn't look at the car, didn't do an inspection, but it was a, not enough, not so expensive that if it really sucked, you know, I could get out of it. Sure. And it would be a fun experience. Well, we saw the car the other day. It's very clean, very nice. I, I, I mean, looked out. You could out. certainly sell it yep. now, you know, at Radwood. How's that? And my dad didn't or understand it Radwood. until he started seeing people at our lag come in and look at it. And he's like, these people are really digging this. I go, the, it's just because it's so weird. It's so weird. And my generation remembers them, but it's been a this memory we've lost for like 30 years. And all of a sudden- It like, helps bring other ones back though. You see that and then you're like, oh, you, you remember what something. What happened to that car? What and, happened to that car? Whatever's personal for that person. Exactly. It's a trigger. Yep. I love it. You're triggering everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, we've done the time, so let's wrap it up. But I want to talk about La Tortuga, who is dressed a little differently lately because uh, you're going, what you tell everybody. What's going on yeah, with La Tortuga? Yeah, um, I put, everyone thinks I messed with the ride height. I just put on 
smaller wheels. Regular wheel, <laughs> well, regular. They're the same size wheels. I just put on normal size tires, not these off, not off road, but they were just grand touring minivan tires that would help give it more height. It drove much better. But a friend of mine, uh, his name's Ollie, and uh, he has a thing called Retro Sporting Day or something. And they're going to do a vintage track day at Willow Springs in April. I think Friday, April 10th. I think people are welcome to just come out and hang out. Cool. It's all 88 and older cars. There's only going to be, I think, 25 or 30 cars. Cool. And it's really for, like, I used to do a lot of track stuff in a late model BMW, and I I don't really do that as much anymore, and I would like to go out there, but it, I don't want to go out there with GT3s zipping by me. And I just want to go out and hang out and go do a few laps and hang out with friends. And yeah. So I, I tried actual s- sport purpose tires, and it's like that car. Transform the car. Right? And I know the car is still ridiculously high up for the tires so that shit on the roof and everything yeah and i'm thinking this is already 10 times the experience and now i put the other ones i just did that was a test day last friday and now i put the other ones back on and we're are you more likely to flip it with grip and high you know what i mean if it hold huh. before it would let go and you would just oh out. nowadays it's gonna probably hold you put some nice rubber on no the i think it'll I mean, it's it's good rubber, but it's still not. It's an old car. It's not okay. fast. Yeah, and I don't think that'll be. And, and for the track day, I'm going to take the roof rack off. And oh, okay. No, no. They, right. I've taken you the know, car. I'm thinking you're going to no, do your no, thing no. and go make it your own. <laughs> no, I, I've take. I've been. I've done lap sessions and like not track days, but just track tours with it on. And we get kind of a bit of a grief from the track people until the just organizer goes. No, I've seen this car do thousands of miles. In turns, nothing's and coming nothing, off, and it never does. But for this day, I'm going to take all the crap out. I'm going to take just like a you know like a regular track day. Cool. Take the roof rack off and actually see that how it is, awesome. how it drives. You know, cool. and but I, after I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just use these and just put these wheels on and you know go up to the mountains in them. But they do really drive crappy on the street. Mm. Like I'm used to. The, the comfort of the, it was yeah. You drove the car with uh, the other ones. It's, it's just the most comfortable. It's comfortable it old car. Drive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a touring. I turned into a GT car. So it's a momentum machine too, because it just wants to like you. Can, mm-hmm. It just wants to drive, 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 drive. Exactly. Happy so, car. So I'm excited. Always fun to do something different with that car. How do you feel about this? How, That's is great. This your third or fourth? You third. third. It is definitely a third. Okay. Once the first time when you just moved, you know, got the David Letterman set. Once with Jennifer. And, All right. And now. Well, we miss Jennifer. Please give her. Our I love. know. I know. She. She's taking care of a broken cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, okay, well, now we have a new segment that we call Final Thoughts, and this is where you leave people with anything you would like them to know either about you or uh, if you've got uh, words of advice for the universe. I don't know. Anything you want. Is there any – do I look at a camera? Anything uh, I, well, I I saw this for the first time when you had Johnny Lieberman on, so I, was, I started thinking a little bit about it. And I think it's uh, – and it sounds trite. You know, don't judge a book by the cover. It's really easy with our busy lives to focus – to someone to come across your path, client or future client or whatever, and you quickly pass judgment based on things that they say or do. And I have found that the more I get to know people, overwhelming majority that are enjoy the cars that we enjoy, I generally like them. Mm-hmm. And so it's uh, when you're busy and stuff, it's it's easy for them to take think of you as a certain person, like oh, you're a used car salesman, and you're you're this. And um, you know, just get past that a little bit. Don't be so quick to put you put people in boxes, kind of thing. You never know. Oh, good for you. I like Man. that, Paul Kennel. First guy. I love good you, brother. You, love you feel you good about this? I feel like oh, yeah. you're just a total natural. You should have one of these. You should have an auto kennel <laughs> podcast. No, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go be a used car salesman. <laughs> we'll do All it right. for you. Uh, awesome. Well, we won't see it tomorrow at Breakfast Club. No, but uh, thanks for having me, though. I really appreciate it. It's, it's not our thing. I mean, we just, I know. We you just reached go out there for and, breakfast. No, but thanks for having me here today. Oh, oh, I see. And I do appreciate you doing that. <laughs> so many people keep asking me, like, like, what's the rules to the breakfast club? And I'm like, it's the one thing do we no meet rules. here? I said, no, 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 just meet up at Newcomb's. <laughs> you got like three hours to make it there. You yeah. just figure out. Get there. And if you wake up in the morning and that's not what you want to do, then, then don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. It's way less than you're making it. <laughs> Yeah, if you're going to be stressed out about it, don't come. 
Yeah. That's really yeah. what it comes down to. Because some people are like, oh, I got to fit it in. I told them I was going to no. come. And then they do. And they're like, oh, I can only stay 15 minutes. Like, then why do you right. I, I, I start in the beginning of the week and I, I say, okay, I'd like to go. And I'll try to arrange things to do that. You back time it. Yeah, and it's and I'll and and, it, and sometimes it works out great, and it's like, wow, I really got everything so that I can go and because I need it for kind of decompression. I um, think a lot of people. I do. wish I lived at the base of of La Cunata or just the base of any twisty roads. I'm, I'm Maybe jealous. Maybe we should all just get an apartment. Like some of it, you just get a crash pad, like pilots, <laughs> just some kind of crash pad. One of those mansions down there, but we'll just put bunk beds in it and everything. You guys should totally <laughs> like, do like that. Like they were doing in Venice when we moved out. Yeah. yeah. All those coders, the coding houses and everything. I mean, just, or even if you had That's your car, idea. I think I think Matt Farah talked about it, have your car there and then just take the train or whatever and you're just in your own world. You get there and drive and... Yeah, that yeah. would be exceptional so someday someday it'll happen get it going Paul uh, Keller. angeles crest amusement park is there anything <laughs> do we uh mill of chocolates on sunday you yeah i i i might do that i i'm right now it looks good I, and i have a bunch of new cars i want i use those part of it is just to drive further i want to go do an hour on the freeway and really get the vibe of the car so yeah i, I got uh lots of choices to shakedowns shake do all your definitely shakedowns Definitely. Uh, okay, so Mrs. Ryan, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I know. How exciting is that? Breakfast so Club excited. Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, Jennifer. Even though you're not. There we go. Even though Jennifer isn't into it, I'm not really into it either, but happy Valentine's Day, Jennifer, and I do love you. <laughs> uh, and that's it, right? Have a great yeah. weekend, everybody. Mila Chocolate's on Sunday. There's something on Saturday, too, but I don't remember what. You doing anything on Saturday? There's all sorts of stuff. There's something at PEC. There are dri PCA drives all over the place. Yep. All right. Mrs. Ryan, I love you so very much. Love you too. Paul Kennel and the Ed and Jennifer Kennel and everyone <laughs> else you. in your clan. We love, love you, guys. you so, so very much. We love much. you too. We love everybody at home. Please have a great weekend and we'll see you out there.